hey, I'm back. Listen, I got up to walk away and take the phone and put it on the charger and so I can get ready to load it up. And this song came to me and I was popping my fingers and walking, just marching on. I said, let me record this. To the utmost, Jesus saves. To the utmost, Jesus saves. He will pick you up and turn you around. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus saves. To the utmost, Jesus saves. To the utmost, Jesus saves. He will pick you up and turn you around. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus saves. No matter where you are in life, no matter how low you may be, Jesus will pick you up if you come to him and he will turn your life around. And you will say, Hallelujah, the highest praise unto him. Hallelujah, Jesus saved me. Call out to him and ask him to come into your heart. He's right there knocking on the door of your heart anyway. He just wants you to open up the door and let him in. He will pick you up. And if you repent, he will help you turn your life all the way around. You will not be the same at all. All the ugly will be gone. All the sins will be washed in the blood. He will throw, he said, your sins into the sea of forgiveness and will not remember them anymore. When he looks at you, he will only see the blood of Jesus and that you are clean and that you are holy and that you are righteous. And that you are his child, his offspring, born of him. Don't miss out on the best thing that can ever happen in your life. That is giving your life over to Jesus totally. I mean, throw it all, throw like you're throwing the dice. Throw it all out there and don't take it back. Throw your life into him and he will make something beautiful out of it. He will make you holy and pure. I don't care what you have done. It does not matter what you have done. There is nothing too low, too horrible, too despicable, too nasty and filthy that you can do that he cannot wash away with his blood. When he hung on that tree, every sin that mankind could do, could think, imagine, was on Jesus and he destroyed the works of the devil. That cross where he was nailed, he spilled his blood and he shed it. He was rejected by the Father for us in our place. He became you on that cross. Witchcraft of every kind. Anything, no matter how dark the arts it is. Satan is nothing when it comes to Jesus. He can clean you up. Wash you clean. I don't care if you were born in the old cult. And you were one of the chosen of them. And have sacrificed human lives. Do you know if you come to him 
and give him it all. Give your life to him and not turn back. He will wash you clean. That moment that you make the decision and give over to him, he will be there for you that when the temptation comes, if it comes, the devil's going to try to come back and get you lie. <laughs> Don't listen. Know the blood. Call on the blood. Call on the name of Jesus. Live in the name. He said the name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and are safe. Live in his name. Have all your faith in his name and in his blood and in what he did for you on that cross, in that grave where he defeated Satan and stripped him of all that he took from Adam. Oh, I'm telling you, Jesus saved. He'll save your soul from the misery that has been put upon you. I don't care how mentally ill and out of your mind you think you are or you think your family is. Jesus can regulate your mind. He can pick you up and turn you around. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus saved. He can do it for you. Wow, I didn't plan on going through it and all that, but somebody needs this. A whole lot of people need this. He'll fix it for you. He will fix it for you. The rapist, the child molester, the homosexual, the trans, any and all of whatever's out there. I don't care what the extent is. There is no act and torment and whatever you think and whatever's going on in your life that he cannot deliver you from. He can't. He's the only one that can. Well, I tried it and I, I, I fasted and I prayed and I read the word. You don't stop just because the devil's kicking up some dust in your life. The only hope is Jesus. And you just keep on striving. See, the, the thing is, is endurance. Endure to the end. You don't stop stomping the devil's head. You don't stop believing. You don't stop just because he's still, the devil's still, because all he can do is talk. Try to make you feel like you like them things. This is who I am. This is what I am. This is uh, the only way that I, excuse me, the only way that I can make a living is, is stealing and robbing and shooting, killing people, or whatever. You don't stop. See, he will try to outlast you. You've got to know, just don't act out on it. I know it, it sometimes makes you feel like your mind's going to explode. That's because you still believe he's got some power. That the devil's got some power. He don't have any power. He has been defeated. Jesus took the keys to the kingdom from him and gave them to us. It's righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Get baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost. Seek God until it comes. It'll come. Just surrender. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I just surrendered. I just I gave it all. I didn't care who saw me, what it looked like, how loud I was. And I thank God that I was in a church that they didn't mind just letting you fall all out in the floor or whatever you felt like you needed to do in order, you know, it was just, that was just a physical manifestation, but I was working my way to surrenderance. 
And it was people praying for me. You, you can be at home. You know, pe there are people praying for you even though you're not in a church building. Do you know that? People like me. We're in our houses praying and interceding for you to go ahead and get it. Go ahead and, and, sur and surrender. Go ahead. Keep on praising. And I just, all I knew to say was thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's all I knew was thank you, Jesus. I just kept thanking him. Thanking him for saving me. I didn't even know I was getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. I thought I was getting saved. I was already saved. I had already been surrendered my life to him. But I didn't understand anything. And I just was, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And just waves of his presence just kept coming. Just kept coming. Kept coming. I just kept crying. And it just, because he was purging me and he was washing me and cleansing me. And the more I thanked him, the more he came, the stronger he came. And I would, I would go out in the spirit, come back, and praise him some more. The last time I came back out of the spirit, it was one particular time I came out, and I was thanking him, and it was like he was right there. And I could feel him listening to me. Mm, sorry to talk about this. And without an ugly cry. <laughs> And I went out in the spirit again. It was just, I, it was like I was asleep because I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't see heaven. I didn't see anything, but I had gone out. And when I came back, I came back in another language, speaking in a heavenly language, just rolling out of me. Rivers of living waters was rolling up out of me in a heavenly language. Let me tell you something that's better than anything you think you could do in your life. That's better than any drug. That's better than any sex. It's better than anything. Let me tell you something. I am so grateful to be saved. I am not ashamed. I ain't ashamed of even crying. I don't want to look ugly or on here. <laughs> but, woo! Honey, listen. This is for you. Jesus is calling. He is reaching out through me to tell you, come. Won't you come? There's room at the cross. For you, there's a room at the cross for you. There is room, there's room at the cross for you. Hallelujah. There's room at the cross for you. And we are fixing it for you. Just come. Just say yes. Surrender. I mean surrender. It didn't make any difference to me who I had to, if I was going to lose my husband because he didn't understand anything about this or whatever. It didn't matter if my family wouldn't talk to me anymore. It didn't matter if I had to not wear pants anymore, which it's not true. It didn't matter about the makeup. It didn't matter about anything. All I wanted was to be like Jesus. I wanted him in my heart. I wanted the fullness of him. I wanted him hands down, flat, just whatever. That's how you have to come. You'll get it all if you come that way. See, when you just come and, you know, give, give your life over, you get the spirit of God. He's holy and you get, you know, but you need to be filled all the way up, fully surrendered with that evidence of another language. Because Satan is waiting for a void in you. 
And when he feels that, when he, you know, Noah's a void there, the house has been cleaned and swept out and washed and cleansed in the blood. He want to, he want, he, oh, he going to try to come back. Now he can't come back in unless you let him. He can't come in. He can't, he can't even come in. He'll mess with your head. He'll try to mess with your head. He'll, he'll make you think you're not saved. He, when he get finished with, with you, if you don't get a full surrender, surrenderance. I remember this man, he told this story, and I've got, I think it's on some other uh, YouTube videos about this, um, this man. He was uh, stung by some jelly, a box, dangerous, uh, venomous uh, box jellyfish. Uh, I'm trying to think of where he was. I don't know if he was in uh, Bahama Islands or uh, where was he at? I don't know. Australia somewhere maybe? I don't know. Anywhere. Anyway, he was surfing at night or whatever. And got stung by these box of jellyfish. He was just a young man at the time. And he died. And uh, he had an experience and went to heaven and whatever. Long story short, without going through that whole story, he had given his life to Jesus. And he didn't want to come back. But he came back for his mom's sake because she was praying and calling him back. And, his, and the Lord said, you know, She's calling you. Because he said, I don't have a reason to go back. I don't want to go back. People that go to heaven, they don't want to come back here. And he said, and he could hear his mother calling him. She was praying for him. It was the reason that he was able to even be alive enough to meet Jesus. Because I think he was an atheist before he died. And she was still interceding for him. And he said when he woke up the next morning from all of this, he ended up out of the hospital, fully healed and everything, got out of the hospital, the Lord did a miracle, it was a miracle. And he said when he looked out of his window, he saw some dark figures. And outside of that, in those dark figures, when he looked even closer, he noticed their eyes were red and were like serpent eyes. And the Holy Spirit reminded him they're there wanting to get back in. So he had to, you know, he got in and getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. But the Lord was showing him scripture. And he said, I didn't know anything about that. I hadn't read that in the Bible before because I was late to But they couldn't come in the room. They couldn't even come in the room. But they were standing outside the window looking for an opportunity for him. Was he going to walk away from God and come let them in, yield to them? Was he going to yield his mind back to them again? Wow. So just know, and that wasn't to frighten you, but it's to let you know they don't want to let you go, but they don't have any choice when you make a choice for Christ. They want to see, they stupid, <laughs> want to see if they can get back in. Or, you can't get back in if Jesus is in there. But they can wreak some havoc on your life if you accept them. In areas of your soul. And torment the heck out of you if you don't stick with Jesus and go all the way full throttle. Your soul is your emotions, your will, and your mind. Your spirit can be born again and brand new. But if you're still thinking like the devil, you, you're going to accept the way the devil thinks and the way he, and accept what these demons want, want in life. And you're going to, no, no, you can't, you're going to, you'll feel like you're not even saved. You don't let him in your mind. You get baptized and feel full of running over and it floods your mind. And your heart, Everything of you becomes Christ. And I know that's kind of still, well, just know. They can't come back in if you don't let them in. They're on the outside now. They don't have a home anymore. 
Don't nobody want to be put out of their house. <laughs> you know? They're going to try to get back in, stand there knocking on the window and knocking on the door. But you let Jesus in. Now they got to stand on the outside. They cannot come in. So go, go wholehearted. Go all the way. Head first. Dive all the way in. Get saturated in him. Don't let up. Oh, we get baptized in the Holy Ghost. And you, no, you can't back off this. You got to keep that fountain flowing. Keep that fountain flowing. And God will bless you. Will, he will bless you. You can still be rich. You can still have fun. You just, you can't be out there doing the devil's fun. Okay. But you can still have fun. Clean, pure fun. Fun like you've never known it before. Well, I hope and pray that I have encouraged you and inspired you and motivated you to come to Jesus and get what he's got for you. Oh, my goodness, the, the gifts and the prizes that come along with the riches and glory of his treasures of heaven that is right there waiting for you. Don't be fooled by the devil telling you that there's nothing for you in, in Jesus. No fun, no nothing, can't do nothing. Let me tell you something. When the devil get finished with you out there, <laughs> you won't have anything. You'll be looking for something to fill the void because it's, it's, it's not what he's got for you does not satisfy. But Jesus does. Love you. See you next time.